Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design. In this video, we are going to look at subroutines. Okay, so what is a subroutine? It is a piece of code that will use that will be used repeatedly in a program. Okay, and when this happens, you could certainly implement you know this repetitive code by copying and pasting instructions in the main program loop, and you could copy and paste it over and over and over every time you needed to use it. One of the issues, though, that we've seen is that every instruction statement that you put in your assembly code will actually be assembled into an opcode and an operand or, or set of opcodes, and it actually takes space in program memory. So every time you put something down, it, it is real. It's going to cre create binaries that sit in program memory, and it's going to start taking up more and more space. So one of the things that you can do is instead of actually taking that code and pasting it over and over is you could take it and put it outside of the main program loop. And then whenever you need it, you could just move the program counter down to the location in memory where it resides and execute it. And then when you're done with the subroutine, you would just return to the main program where you left off and continue operation. And so the advantage of this is that you use less program memory. OK, so your your program is going to be smaller. Another advantage of this is that your code becomes more readable. So you, you basically don't have a ton of instructions in your source code. You can, every time it comes along, you're just like, go do this subroutine and it might have a, you know, a descriptive name. And so it becomes more readable. And then the, the other advantage is that when you consolidate the functionality in these subroutines, essentially what you're doing is breaking down the task into smaller and smaller units. And the subroutine itself can be something that can be documented and says, this is what this subroutine is going to do. And then somebody designs it. And then if you ever have problems, you can go back to it and go, well, this is what the subroutine is supposed to do. Is it doing it? Okay. All right. So subroutines have, you know, there's other names for this. You probably heard procedures, functions, routines, methods, subprograms. They're all the same thing in terms of they're just a chunk of code that is implemented outside of the main program loop, and then you jump down to it to execute it. The big difference between these is just how you pass information back and forth. Okay, now we said we are going to jump to the subroutine, <clears throat> and that makes sense. You know, that's how we move between around in our program. We're going to take the program counter and go down here. And if you think about it, the starting address is always going to be the same, right? Because the, the opcodes and operands start right here. But we actually have, when we get done with it, we need to jump back to the main program and take off where we left out. So that becomes kind of a trick because I could, all, I could put a, a jump always down to the start of the subroutine. But think about if I called... You know, and that would work. But think about if I called the subroutine from a bunch of different locations in the main program. The return address is going to vary depending on where I called it from. So if I call it from like the beginning of my program, I jump down to here and then I execute the program and then I jump back, right? That return address was right after the call. And then I execute, execute, execute. And then let's say I came down here, I jumped to the starting address, same starting address of the subroutine, but when I did the return, it was a different return address. So you have to actually do something a little bit special in order to handle the dynamic return address. And guess what? That's what we do with the stack. The stack gives us the ability to have dynamic storage allocation. And so there's two, there's two instructions that are provided with the MSP430. One is a call and one is a return. The call is where you would think, well, all it's going to do is move the program counter down to the start of the subroutine. And it does do that. But what it does first is it pushes the return address onto the stack. Then it takes the address label, the actual hard-coded address, puts it in the program counter, you jump down, and you execute. So it's a two-step process. It pushes the return address of where the next instruction is to, to execute in the main program onto the stack. It comes down here, executes, you know, moves the program counter, and then it executes. When you're done with the subroutine, you do a special instruction called return, R-E-T, which then is going to return the program counter up here. But the, the way that it knows where to go is, is by using the stack. So it pulls the return address off of the stack whenever you do R-E-T. Okay, so uh, last thing on subroutines before we do our, our example 
is how do you pass information back and forth to the subroutine? When you really only have three ways to, to store any variable in a computer now, you can use a CPU register, you can use the stack, and you could use a dedicated variable in data memory. Okay, and that's that's really all there is in a computer anyway. Okay, let's do it. Let's do a uh, an example. I'm going to create a subroutine that is very very simple. All subroutines start with an address label because you absolutely need to have a label to track where the starting address is. And I'm going to pass a variable down here, and we'll put we'll use R4 to pass it. And all I'm going to do is something really simple. I'm just going to invert R4. And then I'll do an RET to return. So this is going to be my, my subroutine. Then what I'm going to do is I'll just put a, a test value into R4, and then I'll call the, the uh, subroutine. But then I want to do it a, a multiple times so that we can watch how the return address is pushed onto the stack and how it's a different return address depending on where we call it. Okay, And so there's a couple different notes here uh, that I want to highlight before I type this out. When I do call, I have to put the hard-coded address as the operand. So that means I do pound complement it, or pound the address label of subroutine. That's critical, because if you don't, what it's going to do, if you just put complement it, it would go to the location in memory of the address complement it and grab that. We don't want the data that resides at the address that complement represents. We want the address itself that complement represents. OK, so let's take a look at this. Uh, go ahead and fire up CCS. And let's do a new file, a new CCS project. Oh, file new project and CCS project. For some reason, the CCS is looking different today. And here we go. So I'm going to come in here, MCU selected. I'm going to do ASM. And then let's just call it uh, sub routines, empty only, finish. Okay, got my MSP430 plugged in, everything's good to go. I got my main program here. And let's come down here. And here's my main. And I'm going to certainly have my main and then we'll do jump main and that represents my while one loop infinite loop. And what I'm going to do is I need I'm going to grab a comment header. And I'm going to section off where my subroutines go. And so notice that these, when I do this, this is just different instructions. Okay, so I'm going to go complement it, and then I'm going to do invert w of r4, and then I'm going to return. Okay, and so when I look at that, this is still in program memory. Okay, I didn't change sections, right? So I didn't use a directive to go put this this specific code anywhere else. It is sitting directly in program memory after my main loop. Okay, it's just that how we access it using the program counter. Okay, so let's do our test. So I'm gonna do uh, move.w and I go pound and let's put a, 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 a in there, preceded with a zero, of course, and we'll pass it in R4. And then I'm gonna do call and I gotta go pound complement get. All right, so there's my, there's my call and that's all I do, but let's do it a couple more times. So let's now do it again and go b, 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 and then let's do it again and do C, 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 C. And what I'm really interested in here is watching it work, and that's fun, but I'm really I really want to pay attention to the program counter. Okay, so I'm gonna do, let's fire up our debug session, and this will assemble it, and la da da. Okay, okay. And what I wanna do is look in the register viewer, and I really care about Let's see, let's, let's put our breakpoint and let's run to it. And then let's think about what's happening here. Okay, so I wanna see my main program and I wanna see it jump down here, of course. But I also wanna see program counter and I wanna look at the stack pointer. And I guess we need R4 on here also. Okay, so I got R4 there. And so here I go. I'm gonna move something onto R4, A, A, A. But now I'm gonna call complement it. But you know what I want to do? I want to watch the stack. So I'm going to do, I'm going to go down to 3,000. Okay. And so remember, that's where the stack pointer is, is at. And you can see our test values are still in program memory from our last example. But I'm sitting here and I want to look at what gets pushed onto the stack. So how do I know what the address is for complement? Right. How, how would I ever know that? Well, you know what? I, I do know where that is. I could actually go to program memory. 
And I could take a look at the labels that are in here and I could say, okay, where, here it is. Here's complement. It's at 8024. So that's after the opcodes and operands from my main program, which are, see the label main. Main starts at 8000A, and then it has, here's all the opcodes and operands, and you can see, like, here's an opcode. I don't know what the number, but it looks like an opcode to me. Then you see AAAA, right? And then you see, uh, here's the opcodes, I assume, for the call. That's fine. And then here's 4034. That must be the move into R4, and then I see BBBB, and then here's the op, op codes and operands for uh, for this little fella. Uh, and actually, if I think about it, I've got 8024. Look at I see 8024. This must be the operand for the call. And it's like, okay, life is good. But I find that complement it, the address label is 8024. So that's what I kind of want to keep in mind. Let's go back to the end of program memory where the stack is, and I'll watch this. Okay, so I'm going to call the subroutine. I'm going to step, and I want to watch program counter, stack pointer, and R4. So I'm going to go ahead and step. Look at what happened. Program counter moved to 8024. That's exactly the address of complement it. And that's great. I put that value into program counter. Not that big of a, not that uh, miraculous, but what is kind of cool is 8012 was pushed onto the stack. What is 8012? Well, that is the return address of the address right after the call, which is going to be this the address of this instruction right here. And I needed to know that because that's where I'm going to return to. So let's take a look at what happens now. Notice stack pointer was, was decremented because I pushed something onto the stack. So now let's go ahead and step. I'm going to invert AAAA, which is 5555, and here goes return. When I return, watch, where, watch program counter. I'm going to return up to program memory, which is 8012, and now I'm right here in the program. But look at what stack pointer did. It pulled or popped the information off of the stack and put it into the program counter. That was the return address. And then it incremented the stack pointer because we popped. And so now it's like there's nothing on the stack. Okay, that was cool. Let's watch this now. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put something into program memory. Program memory is, program counter is at 8016. The next address in memory will probably be 801, 8020. I don't know what it'll be, but we're going to know right away. Watch, I'm going to step. Look at what was pushed onto memory or onto stack, 801A. So that was the return address of where in the main program to return, which is going to be the, this instruction right here. Notice that the program counter was put down to the address label for complement it, which was still 8024. So a totally different return address, consistent starting address, and this differing return address is held using the dynamic storage allocation of the stack. Isn't that awesome? So then I go right here and I implement it. And then I return, program counter goes back to 801A and look at where I'm at in my main program. I have now moved down to here. So now I go boom, move that. And then I'm gonna call, once again, 8022 is the return address pushed onto the stack. And then program counter goes down to the complement at address, 8024, and we execute it. And now I pull, and here goes the return address back into the program counter, and I am rocking. Okay, this is sweet. So it, pretty simple, but it's a really important concept because this sets the stage for a whole ton of functionality that awaits us once we start using the stack automatically to hold return addresses. Now, here's what I want to do right now. I want to show you the most common problem you are going to have when you do a subroutine, the old pound. Let's pretend that you are just coding away and you're like, I got this, I know how to do it, and you just forget a pound sign in front of compliment. <laughs> what's gonna happen? All right, well, I'll tell you what's gonna happen. I'm gonna run down to here. It is not gonna put the address 8024 for compliment. Okay, so let's go down here. Let's go 8024. 8024. It's not going to put 8024 into the program counter. It's going to put what is at 8024, which happens to be E334, which I think is an opcode. So it's going to put that in a program counter, and then you are screwed. So watch what happens. I'm going to go move and watch this call. It calls it. Program counter goes to E334. That's not even a valid address or no, it didn't even know what what it was doing there. So it got it broke the program. No debug information available because we're outside of the program code. 
you just crashed the computer. <laughs> so a nice way of just saying, hey, man, when you do a call, remember that pound sign. All right, that's it. Good job. You just now have used a subroutine and you don't even you watch the stack it used to have these dynamic return addresses. Congratulations. That's it. All right. Remember, support my channel by subscribing so that I can continue to bring you these cool videos. See ya.